Okay, today I'd like to talk a little bit more about calculus. Uh, my students often ask me, why are we using calculus? Why do we have to go through this uh, extra level of mathematics? And I've got a problem I think might uh, illustrate this. Calculus is what you use when you've got parts of your problem that change smoothly over time. Okay? So if you think of moment along a beam, say there's a, a cantilever beam with a force at the end, the moment changes as you go down the beam. It makes sense to use calculus there. Um, a simple one is actually from the world of dynamics, but it's a, it has worked pretty well. Let's imagine there's a space probe and it's accelerating. Okay? I'll draw a space probe here. I don't know what this looks like. Let's say it's a Let's say it's going to go out and explore the planets or something. Maybe it's headed for the moon. That's a pretty rough space probe, but there you go. There's an engine back here, and the thrust from the engine, the force, is 30 kilonewtons. Okay, the mass, the initial mass of the space probe, is 10,000 kilograms. Now, the thing about rocket engines is they make an awful lot of thrust, but they also burn an awful lot of fuel. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, fuel consumption. How about FC is 10 kilograms per second. And I've based this off uh, notional rocket engines. There's actually one called a SpaceX Kestrel that's pretty close to this. This is good enough for what we're trying to do here. So we're given all this stuff. Let's find change in velocity. If the engine burns for 180 seconds, three minutes. Now that's a fairly long burn for a rocket engine, but again, this is about right. Okay, I'm not I'm not worried too much about the details. I'm just trying to uh, give you an idea of why calculus is, is so helpful here. Well, we already know that F equals m a, right? Well, that's not really what Newton wrote. He actually wrote something that was a little closer to this. which is F equals mass times the second derivative of position, which is acceleration. Um, this is also the equivalent to writing md2x dt squared. Here we go. These two things both mean the same thing. These are just different ways of uh, writing a second derivative. It's just a notational difference. Okay? Well, let's think about this a second. Normally, you think of this as just sort of arithmetic. You're just multiplying numbers together. But m is going to change now. And in fact, it's going to change a lot. So let's do this. Let's write m of t equals our initial mass. It's 10,000 kilograms. But we're going to lose 10 kilograms a second. That's what the engine's burning. Okay, so now mass is a function of time. If we leave this off, we're going to get the wrong answer. Right? Now, how do, you, how do you plug that into here? Okay? This assumes A is constant and M is constant. Right? There's, no, there's no calculus explicitly written in there. Well, you could do things like if I'm going to burn for 180 seconds, maybe I could break the, uh, uh, that time span into a bunch of little pieces and assume m is constant over the pieces and take a, take a stab at it that way. Well, I could do that. The more pieces I broke it into, the more accurate it would get. Well, if I make the pieces infinitesimally small, that means really, really, really close to zero time span, but not exactly zero, that's calculus. So, if I'm willing to use this expression and write this out with the derivative in it, I'll get the exact right answer. Okay. So let's do this. We know that F equals MA. So we, well, let's, uh, we're trying to solve for delta V here. You can also write this out as F equals M V dot, or M times the derivative velocity with respect to time. Right? That's MA. Derivative velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So I haven't really done anything wrong there. Um, my force I already know, so let's write this out. There. 
there. All I did was rearrange that expression a little bit to get that. And we already know all this stuff. Oops, that's 30,000, not 31,000. There we go. Right. Now, that's the governing equation. If you can solve that, we can find that dV, or delta V, is how we're going to write it out. Now, let me uh, clear out some space here. Now, let's see. Let's get rid of all that. Get rid of all this. So I know that dV dt equals 30,000 over 10,000 minus 10 t. Okay? Now, how do you make a derivative go away? Well, you integrate. Derivative is the reverse of an integration. So I can also do this. Okay. I can multiply through by these if I like. These represent little tiny numbers. Almost zero, but not exactly zero. Because they're not zero, I can just multiply through like I would any other number. So this is okay. I haven't violated any rules. To make that go away and that go away, I'm going to integrate. So, let's write this out correctly. So there you go. That's the final expression. Now, I don't know what this V initial and V final, um, V initial isn't really uh, zero, but I'm looking for the change in velocity. So this is going to be delta V. Now, I know what that number is. That's 180 seconds. That's three minutes. That's pretty easy to plug into a calculator or uh, maybe a symbolic math program, MathCAD, or you could go to uh, uh, the Wolfram Integrator on the web if you like. When you do this, you get, let's see, make sure I get this right here, 595.35 meters per second. That's the change in velocity. That's a lot. Okay, the speed of sound at sea level is around 334, I think. Okay, now, what if what if FC equals zero? What if we pretended that the, there was no weight change because of the fuel burning? If we did that, we wouldn't have to use calculus. We'd be able to just use arithmetic. The problem is that when you do that, your delta V comes out to be 540 meters per second. Okay? That's a problem. This is not the right answer. You're going to miss by a little over, what is it, uh, 55 meters per second. Now, 55 meters per second may not sound like a lot, but if this space probe is going from here to Mars, the difference because of those two velocities may be huge. You may miss the planet by a lot. You can't be off that far and expect it to work. So you don't get the right answer that way. You don't get close enough to the right answer that way. You really have to use calculus. Okay? And just for completeness here, if you want to uh, try this on your own, this is the uh, uh, form of the equation. When you work that out, you're going to get a natural log. And let's see, let me write this out here. Look this up in the integration table. That's the form you get. Let me do, just double sure here. Minus, okay, that looks right. But that's how you figure this out. Calculus is what makes this all work. Since the mass is changing smoothly versus time, it's naturally accounted for when you solve this as a differential equation. And this really is a differential equation. It's a real easy one, though. Okay, so that's why you need calculus or an example.